just some call outs and callbacks to things that, like I said, are going to be very EOC like and to make sure that we walked away from this unit um, learning, hopefully. Or so you can make note that you need to go back and figure them out if not. Um, your absolute value parent function is going to be like y equals the absolute value of x. And then your transformations, so that would be your 0, 0 vertex with a 1 to 1 slope on either side. Hopefully that's already stuck pretty good. Um, all parent functions are important, but as we talked about before, the biggest thing is understanding how they slide and just recognizing them. So again, you can use Desmos to help with that because at no point will you not have access to Desmos. Um, in this case, you're looking at this function down here. We have a negative one, negative, negative one, negative four as our vertex. So if we're looking at our formula, it's still a one to one slide or I'm sorry, rate of change. So the number in front of your absolute value does not change. This is going to be x. And to the left, remember, it would be minus, minus 1. So that's plus 1. And then down 4, minus 4. So being able to identify those. Typically, I would say they're probably going to be more of an apps, um, multiple choice question. So I wouldn't hugely worry because, again, you can type these in to Desmos and go find your vertex and your one-to-one -one slope. So as long as you can find your vertex and your one-to-one -one slope, you should be able to use your calculator to work around it as long as it is uh, absolute, oh shoot, sorry, multiple choice. Now what we're going to add to this, and this is a throwback to inequalities. In the lesson we did inequalities and it wasn't a y equals, it was you were just solving for x, so that's a single variable they also put these on the coordinate plane. So that's the important part to being able to identify that this graph is this equation. What we're going to add to it now is we're going to remember that we had solid circles and open circles when we were graphing absolute value inequalities. And am I talking, we did do that, right, already? Why do I feel like now maybe I'm saying this and we didn't? Hold on. I feel like we did. I'm, I'm just making sure. Yes. Yep, there they are, day 11. Cool. I just had a, a minor like heart attack. I was like, oh God, maybe it comes up next. So open circle versus closed circle was the conversation, again, that was single variable where you're just solving. Now we're going to compare like dash line versus solid line. Same idea. So your solid is going to be that greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, and equal to's whereas less than and greater than will be your dash lines, just like your open circle. So not too much different if you can identify like this graph. The only thing that changes, and I have found students either pick up really quickly or they don't, which I need you to let me know because I will give you more information along the way. Um, and then again, practice in Desmos because it basically does it for you, is the shading up versus shading down. So when you're looking at a Y equals absolute value like this, you're up, like so greater than, we're looking at Y. We're looking at our Y axis, and we're very used to looking left and right. But this is Y equals something, or Y is less than. So you are referring to your Y axis. So if you think about your vertex as your deciding point, you're thinking up or down from the vertex, like thinking about the coordinate plane. Um, so all four of these are the equal to kinds of, but we could make this one into what we want to make it into. So our vertex here is a negative one, negative one. So if we write that equation, we're not going to put equal yet. We're going to do a greater than. Let's do greater than or equal to, and that's why we have a solid line. It is still a one-to-one -one slope. It is negative because it's reflected over the x. So in the front, we're going to put a minus, and that's going to be x. It slid to the left one, so we're going to add one, and then it slid down one. Now, y is greater than or equal to, that means bigger numbers. So again, you're going to go from your vertex point and think, is greater than up or down? So if this is our vertex and we're looking at our y-axis, are our big numbers up or are our big numbers down? So I used to make a silly story about, um, like, you're sitting in a boat on the x-axis and you're fishing, right, and you have a hook. If you're big excited, you're catching a fish and you're dragging that fish up. So up above the water, so that would be this way. If you're less than, you're having less than a good fishing trip, that fish is swimming further away from your boat, which is going to be down. 
And again, those of you who've had me, I make up ridiculous things that are not very math minded. The math explanation is your big values are up, so greater than, whereas this way would be your less than values. But I like the fish story way better. And then again, the equal is why that would be solid. So if we were to take this guy, we'll make it a dash line. And our vertex is negative 4, 0. Our rate of change, it's not a 1 to 1. Ooh, actually up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1. So up 3 over 1. Think about that. So that's going to be, let's do y is less than because it's dashed line. It is a positive graph, so we're good out here with the positive negative, but it is a 3 to 1. So we're going to put a 3 on the outside. To the left, 4. I just did all the ones to the left. Sorry, guys. Plus 4 because it's minus minus 4. And then it did not go up or down, so there's nothing on the outside. Y is less than. So again, if our, our boat is going to be sitting wherever our vertex is, theoretically. So if we're fishing and we're having less than fun, that is not coming up above. It's going to be below your graph because we're not pulling it up into our absolute value. So less than is below your dot. So small y values versus greater than would be inside the bowl or inside the uh, absolute value v is going to be you're, you're coloring outside the v or inside the v depending so and the reason this might look weird to you because you just colored all your y is because remember this is going to continue up and your window will expand and the largest y values will be on the inside of that once it expands large enough across that y axis it's everything below it so with that said, like this question, it says, which is the solution of the inequality? So y is greater than or equal to. So because you have an equal to, you can get rid of b and you can get rid of d. No question. Because those are dashed, which means they have no equal to. So you're going to have to be greater than or less than. In this case, this one is from the vertex colored up inside like we filled in the v. So this is going to be a greater than. So this would be y is greater than and then your equation, your absolute value equation. B, from the vertex, it's colored down or around the outside of the V. So that is a Y is less than. No equal marks again because there's dashes. So going back up here, we have a rise to run one. So it's a rate of up to up to over one, up to over one, up to over one. Both look good. And I'm just reading left to right, trying to figure out which one's going to look better. Your graphs are going to be the same. So we're going to look at that equal, which is the solid lines, and then greater than. So again, from that vertex, we filled it in, and it's above. That's our greater than from the vertex. It's down below, so that's our less than. So our answer is going to be C. Are we vaguely picking up the pattern so far? Maybe. Okay, cool. Awesome. Perfect. All right, so if I'm looking at this guy, a vertex is going to be negative 2, 0. And in this case, does this have an equal to or do not have an equal to in this inequality? It is going to have an equal to because these are solid lines, right? It's not dashed like this. So this is the equivalent to a solid circle because every line is just a ton of solid circles pushed together and they make a solid line. So this is definitely going to have an equal to. From our vertex, is it colored up or is it colored down? It's on the outside. So that means it's going to be a down. So Y is going to be less than, because that's what numbers go this way, are the less than numbers. And then you could write your equation. Again, this is Y to Y, 1 to 1 all the way across. Another to the left. And then nothing up. So X plus 2, nothing up. Um... To show you, I gotta go find it again. Sorry. So if we were to take those exact same equations that we just that I just drew for you, and that was, uh -oh. 
move this guy out of the way. So, so we would do our y is less than or equal to, which you're going to get in your calculator, in your keyboard down at the bottom, less than or equal to, and then we have our absolute value x plus 2. It colors it for you. So there's no reason you should miss these. Again, it's not that's why we don't spend a lot of time doing it. As long as you understand the transformations and be able to identify the graph, you have access to Desmos. You don't even actually have to know, um, but you have to use it, which I have found some students do not choose to. Please use it. And if I was to go back, like if you were guessing and you're just checking, so guess and check. So when it's just a less than, again, it's still colored down, but you see the dashed lines here. You see that it shows you your vertex. It shows you your y-intercept. It gives you all the information you could possibly want. Um, so EOC-like questions, they gave you a graph and then you had to pick the equation. So this is not a perfect example of what they were showing on some of their release EOCs that we're going to work on later. But using our absolute value and our inequalities, again, I would not particularly recommend you having to graph this by yourself because again you do have access to Desmos it is a calculator icon in the middle of the test so I would come over here and you had y is greater than the absolute value of x plus 5 and then it was comparing it with or the system had y is less than or equal to 2 most of the ones that I have seen only show the overlap. So that would be like this red up here would go away. It would only show this. I wish it changed color. Was it, it was a better change color. Like if this had been yellow and this had been blue, this would be the green spot. So in this case, I guess red and blue, the purple. So the overlap would be all you would see when they graphed it, when they asked you to find it. So again, just a call out to be able to use this to get around maybe arguably a little more little complica complicated question that it looks a little outside of the realm of things we've done but you have the skill set already so the second one on the worksheet that I had for you was a quadratic which they do love to use because you've been doing quadratics forever so it's kind of like a backhanded gift because most of you don't love them but you have more uh, experience with them than some other types of functions uh oh there we go So again, quadratic, in this case, the equal to, you notice you have your solid line. It is a less than. Same as with your absolute value. Go to your vertex. If it's less than, it's going to be below the vertex. If it was greater than, it would be up on the inside of the, of the quad, uh, parabola. Yes, I was about to use the right word. I was trying to correct myself without having to. And then the second one in that problem on your worksheet was y is greater than or equal to the negative absolute value of x plus 3 plus 5. So a throwback to back when um, in math 1, so just again to give you some, some ways that they think is fair game but it's not necessarily straight from our curriculum, you, in math 1, you had to decide was a point a solution to the system, so both equations. And again, your both is in your overlap. So if I asked you if 3, 4 was a solution to your system, that is not in the overlap. It is a solution to your absolute value inequality, but it is not a solution to the quadratic in this case. That point would not make this equation true if I plug my x and my y values in. So going back to like the algebraic way of proving it. But again, we're in math three, you have Desmos. You don't have to do that algebra stuff. You just need to understand how to read the graph once you put it in and be able to put it in correctly. A uh, good question would be what is, you know, just blank open statement. Find a point that is a solution to both and it's anywhere again where you're finding that like in this case I guess you could call it purple maybe negative negative eight zero and again you could try them and plug them in like this negative eight zero do you think that is a solution or is not a solution guys
And you can type in the chat box if you don't want to holler out. So is that negative 8, 0, that purple dot, a solution or no? Marshall Reagan, what y'all think? Good. It is. And the reason it is, the only way it would not have been had this not been a solid line. So solid dot line counts. Think about solid lines as solid circles. You can stand on them. So this is perfect here. And then any of these negative eights up would be a solution. But again, like negative four, one would not be a solution. It is a solution to your quadratic, but not to your absolute value. So biggest thing is making sure you know if you don't get the graph, there is a mistake somewhere. You can cut these off. Oh, I thought you could. Yeah. By clicking your color, just like before, and it adds it and takes it away. Um, if you want to check an individual instead of the system or both. And again, you really want to focus on the overlaps. And then your keyboard is down at the bottom where you can get all of your absolute values. You can use, I'm sorry, not absolute values, your inequalities. You can use the less than and greater than that's on your keyboard, like on your actual physical calculator's keyboard. Your greater than or less than and equal to, you would need to get from here. Uh, absolute value bars are here. They are also above your inner key if you hit shift, if you haven't already found them. Um, other big callouts that I can think of. I believe that is going to be it for the most part.